Hello, salam alaikum. Um, my name's Amanda Diamond, and I'm going to give you a little report on the state of apitherapy here in Morocco. Um, I'm an apitherapist and a beekeeper. I have an apiary producing manuka in Australia, and I have an apitherapy practice there. Um, here in Morocco, I manage uh, bees on an organic farm for a permaculture project. And I'm also uh, spending a lot of time with traditional beekeeping uh, practices and looking at apitherapy here in Morocco. So it's very fascinating here, apitherapy and beekeeping. Um, I do give lots of talks on beekeeping here and run tours here in beekeeping. But the interesting thing, first of all, is that uh, the whole idea of apitherapy goes back to ancient times. There are drawings on rocks from 7,000 years with bee shamans and actually demonstrating that bees and hive products have been used in community healing here since ancient times. So it's a very, very old practice. And the four main groups that form the culture here, the Amazir, uh, Jewish people, uh, Arabic and Andalusian, they all have um, huge connections to ancient traditional natural healing practices and all of them include apitherapy in their practices. So ancient cultures here that, that still keep their traditions, including apitherapy. So here in Morocco, 70% um, of people choose to do natural healing, natural therapies, above what we might call a Western medicine paradigm. And this takes uh, several different ways of working. So from my experience out in the rural areas where honey is um, made and the plants are gathered, there's a lot of traditional healing, um, apotherapy in conjunction with phytotherapy. Um, people are really relying on these methods for cures. Um, and as you've seen in the recent earthquake, many people live in extremely remote places here and utterly rely on natural therapies. Out in the countryside, I spent time with lots of beekeepers uh, including female collectives where they have honey shamans, very, very old women who have the knowledge of working with honey and hive products to make different medicines, uh, especially in conjunction with a huge um, cornucopia of plants here that uh, they use in conjunction with phytotherapy. And the other side of this in the towns, in the cities, so for example, Fez, Marrakesh, Esuera, which is where I'm based, um, there are medicinal honey shops where honey is dispensed as medicine. The people who run these are often um, quite, uh, quite religious and they see this as you know, a traditional way of healing that's um, acceptable in, in Quranic culture. I went to one dispensary where uh, the man who runs it has been dispensing honey as medicine for over 60 years. And um, the other side of that now is that there are natural pharmacies, including homeopathy, apitherapy, phytotherapy, and I have met apitherapists there who have trained in Eastern Europe. Um, I was trained in Romania. Uh, they have been trained in Czechoslovakia, Ukraine, Russia. So there is also this 
crossing over between the traditional um, Amazir practices of this land and a sort of more modern approach coming in from Eastern Europe as well. So both of these pathways are um, accessible to anyone, uh, whether you live in a tiny rural village or you live in uh, bustling Marrakesh. So um, the... So... I think what's really important here now, and the reason why the, the interest and the, uh, the desire to work with apitherapy is Morocco is predominantly a Sunni Muslim country and 99% um, of people here uh, practice Islam. And there's a very, very interesting surah in the Quran dedicated to bees. And there's quite a few interesting aspects to that surah. But in this context, the most interesting aspect is that honey is regarded in two ways. One, as a cure, as a medicine. And secondly, as a sacred blessing coming from the sacred bee. And... Um, so, first of all, because it's written in the Quran in this way, it's acceptable within the Islamic culture to, to utilize and to benefit from bees and hive products. This is why quite a few of the medicinal honey dispensaries are run by people who have very strong Muslim contact connections, really. So very interesting that this is the way honey is seen in the Quran as a medicine, not a food. So this changes a lot in Morocco. First of all, honey is sold as a medicine. It um, is worth a huge amount of money on more on a medicinal scale than a food scale. And it's treated as something sacred. So it's people will buy honey, even though it's very expensive, but really, really keep it carefully, store it carefully and use it for their health benefits. You don't see honey being slathered on toast or whatever. Honey is also used as um, something that you offer honored guests when they come to the house. And I've experienced this a lot up in the mountains. It's a, sac it's a sacred, expensive product. So the honey here is extraordinary. There are honeys here that only come from Morocco and they all have extremely useful apotherapy um, properties. For example, argan uh, trees are endemic to Morocco exclusively. They're not grown anywhere else in the world. It's illegal to export them. Um, and the products from the argan uh, one of which is argan honey, which is a phenomenal honey um, and very, very rich in all the qualities that argan oil has, which is one of the most natural refined oils anywhere on the planet. Other honeys here are such as euphorbia, cactus, uh, different forms of cactus. Uh, euphorbia is an amazingly strong um, antimicrobial, antibacterial honey, uh, as is the wild thyme honey here growing up in the mountains. And these would be equivalent um, on, on a scale with our leptospermum in Australia, for example, very, very high quality apotherapy uh, used honeys. There are also many different honeys here because of the different food that is grown, such as carob and um, orange blossom and so on. So a huge variety of honeys, but these really, really strong dark honeys, the eucalyptus, the argan, the euphorbia, the carob are used dispense directly for the same sort of things that we would use it for 
uh, in apitherapy anywhere from, um, you know, throat infections, uh, burns, healing, all, all of that. Very, very powerful um, honey. Also in the apitherapy here, um, a lot of use of propolis. Um, very interesting. I came across propolis being injected into the eyes here in a form of a tincture uh, for helping eyesight uh, regain clearer vision. It's I haven't tried it yet, but great reports of it. So I will be trying that in my apitherapy practice um, in Australia. Uh, I think it's a case of experimenting in my uh, in my experimenting workshop to find the right uh, solution for this. So I'd be very interested in what other people have been using there. They use royal jelly, they use wax, mostly for production of creams, whereas I also use wax to help with uh, relieving colds and so on. They don't do that here, but the wax is used in production of many, many creams in conjunction with honeys and phytotherapy. So um, a lot of uh, the contemporary, if you like, apotherapists here work in conjunction with homeopathy, phytotherapy, and in the pharmacies where natural healing is offered, um, they don't separate the apotherapy from the other healing methods. So it's taken as a whole and um, very, very interesting uh, to dip in and out of the high product medicines in conjunction with homeopathy and the, the different healings that they have here. So that's a little introduction to uh, the wonderful world of apotherapy here in Morocco. And I am continuing to research this, uh, going to as many different places as I can to understand how things work here. And I also touch on this on my beekeeping tours here. And uh, it's a really, really fascinating place to look at beekeeping with its ancient traditions. And um, I welcome any questions. Thank you.